Okay. Uh, okay. All right. We got this. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. My name is Frankie Blue, and um, we are back with, of course, another video of makeup and movies. Mm, mm, this movie is good. And of course, as you guys seen from the title, uh, today's makeup and movies episode, uh, we are going to talk about the fun little movie that I is called Sleepover. Sleepover. Okay, and that's starring with Alexa Vega, Jane Lynch, and Steve Carell. So for for those of you that don't know what Makeup and Movies is all about, I watch a movie um, and we talk about it while I create a look that is based off of either the theme of the movie or the movie poster. But we're just going to go off of the movie poster, which looks like this. Before we go ahead and get started there, here to <laughs> before we go ahead and get started here, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down here and go ahead and be part of the tribe. And as well as make sure you guys like and share the video so that way we can bring in more people over here to the tribe so they can see my hot mess. Always be a hot mess and we can all be a hot mess together. We're the hot mess community, okay? Let's live it up. Of course, if you guys want to know what the products that I use for today's video, it will all be in the description box below so you guys can check them out. Let's go starting. Oh, my people. <laughs> all right, so of course the movie starts off with um, Alexa Vega's character. Um, well, Julie. So she's all pressed because I guess her friend Hannah is moving and... Um, because how are you gonna go into high school with um, without a best friend? Hannah tells her like, it's gonna be fine. Like, you know, it's time for you to start branching out and, you know, change your image and do something. So yeah, school's over. Everybody's like in the hallway, throwing their, their papers everywhere. And it's like, it's all excited. It's like the, beginning of like High School Musical when they're like, High School Musical? High School Musical 2, High School Musical when they're like summer, summer, summer. And then the bell rings and everybody just throws their papers. It's like a waste of paper too, like. So Julie's friend, which we never find out what her name is. I don't even know what her name is. She's like this little, the little redheaded girl with like the little bob right here. Yeah, we're just calling her redhead. Um, <laughs> but redhead um, approaches um, the friends, um, Hannah and Julie, and they, she shows her like, oh look, um, looks like Liz is having a, uh, a sleepover party as well. And I guess Julie is also having a sleepover party as well. Then we meet um, Stacy, who is played by Sarah Paxton. And then we have a young Brie Larson, who is Liz. She's like so adorable, but she's like really bitchy in the movie. Stacy and Liz walk by and like start making fun of this like this cute little like heavy set girl. Her name is Yancy. Yes, and I said that correctly. That's her name. Yancy. Remember that. So they make fun of like Yancy for being like a big girl and like all this stuff. Julie ends up inviting Yancy. I guess Yancy is like there is a is a new girl or something. They're just never friends with Julie or um, the girls, so um, they invite um, Yancy to their sleepover. That's like very nice of them to like invite them to like their sleepover however i kind of feel like it was like a pity sleepover hold on i guess it's... <laughs> i kind of feel like it was a like a feel bad for you kind of uh uh invite just because the girls witnessed yancy get you know made fun of by stacy and liz so we meet a young Evan Peters. I forgot that he was actually in this movie. He plays like the nerd with his little nerd squad in the movie. And he's like, so what are you girls doing? Like, oh, I heard you guys are having a sleepover. Julie just is not into him. He's just like, I never like annoying to her. He's like a nerd, like, like, no. 
so no hannah and julie are like walking around i guess they're like shopping or whatever and um stacy pulls up next to them with her uh high school boyfriend todd oh my god todd he's so rad because he's in high school so I guess Stacy was supposed to go to um, Julie's uh, sleepover. I was gonna say baby shower. <laughs> so Stacy tells her that um, she's not gonna go to the sleepover anymore because she's going to the dance with Josh. And um, what's her face? Julie is like confused because like what dance? And she's like the high school dance. And then just ends up leaving. So of course, Julie being the bum of the entire movie, um, she's all like pressed or not pressed, sorry. She's like upset because um, Stacy's not going and that um, Hannah's leaving. I guess Hannah's just trying to like encourage her and tell her like, you know, start making life changes for yourself. Start doing things. Like change your life, queen. Change your life. Um, so they're walking by the high school that Julie's gonna be going and um, she's all like, um, so this is where I, we're gonna be go or this is where I'm gonna be going. Um, it's gonna be sad without you, like, and then she shows her, like, this is where, like, the poppin', like, lunch spot is, which is the fountain. Like, that's where all the cool kids sit. And then Julie spends, like, that's where Stacy's gonna be at, sitting really cool at the fountain, and then this is where I'm gonna be sitting at. And it's, like, these lunch tables next to, like, the dumpsters. And she's like, that's where I'm gonna be at. A loser. Girl, it's a fucking lunch spot. Your life is not gonna change if you don't sit <laughs> at the fountain. Like, <laughs> like what, what does that even mean? Like, girl, please get your ducks in a row. I'm begging you. Here we meet Steve, who happens to be um, Julie's like crush, like high school crush or whatever. He like, like skateboards down these stairs and just like, flies over that fountain like really miraculously. So she's like all mesmerized by it. She's like, oh my God, he's so cool and whatnot. He like totally walks by her and she's like, look, he doesn't even know who I am. Doesn't even notice me or whatnot. And again, here comes Hannah telling her like, girl, start making changes. Do stuff with your life. Like if I was Julie's friend, and she's over here just giving me like Debbie Downer, like, look, he didn't even notice me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, girl, be an independent woman. You don't need no man. So we arrive at Julie's house where we get to meet her mom, who is played by Jane Lynch. And her mom is just like, you know, a regular mom. Not gonna lie, Julie's family is like a huge, it's like a mess. Like, I'm talking a mess. Like, I really do believe that her mom is like the only normal one because let's face it, Julie is a hot mess through this entire movie. Her dad is just like a big mess. He's like, throughout the movie, he's like fix, he's like plumbing or installing some kind of like water filter to like, I don't know, like make the water taste better. And then her brother is like a really, it's just an all around mess. I guess he dropped out of high school, or not high school, he dropped out of college. Um, and it's just like kind of at home being like a weirdo maniac. We cut to nighttime now. And I guess Julie's mom is going out. Um, she's gonna have her little girl's night out. Julie's mom ends up leaving to, for her girl's night. And it's funny too, because the girls are like wondering, those like, wonder what they what where she's going to have fun like and it's funny too because i think they're like 14 or something like that or i don't know they're like middle schoolers going into high school and i just couldn't help but laugh because i'm just like little in my head oh girl <laughs> trust me being when you're an adult you will not have fun a lot of fun so the rest of the girls arrive and they're just having a blast I'm just blasting music, playing dress up, doing each other's nails, stuffing bras in freezers. Um, yes, that's the thing, I guess. Stuff bras in a freezer for, I don't know. While they're all doing that, um, Stacy is like, get, gets picked up by her boyfriend, her high school boyfriend, Todd. 
um and um she starts questioning him because he's just in casual clothes and she's like wearing a dress because she thinks that they're going to the high school dance remember that the high school dance is like lit bro like that is the popping spot where you need to be at he doesn't want to go to the dance um so she's all like okay whatever so they end up like parking in like this field or some sh something like that i don't know like in, the, in a park actually it looks like a park and they park in a park and he's just like trying to like get at her and she just like no i don't want to i don't want to so she doesn't want to hook up with him he gets really upset so he ends up kicking her out of the car and um and breaks up with her so he just ends up just leaving her there at the park um and she just all mad so she ends up calling liz um and tells liz to like hey dance is cut like we're not going to dance i have something better start like a list going okay doesn't he explain like what kind of list or like what's the plan or nothing just like hey i got a new idea start a list click so the girls are like living it up with their like fun little like sleepover little party the doorbell rings and um the girls all go downstairs to see who it is and lo and behold that's when we meet steve carell's character who is this like neighborhood patrol or something like that i don't know i forgot his name he was his officer something but we're just gonna call him officer lost because nine times out of ten this this mofo is like a lost mess like <laughs> An officer lost is just like, I got a noise complaint. And he's just acting real odd to like, hella weird. Like, I heard a noise complaint. So he immediately grabs like, Julie's Coke. <laughs> Not like her, <laughs> her drug Coke. <laughs> like her can of Coke is what I meant to say. <laughs> He grabs her like can of coke and he's like sniffing it. He's like smelling it and then he like dips his finger in it and he's like takes a sip out of it. Cause according to him, it could be anything. It's not just a can of coke. It could be alcohol or something. You just never know with kids these days. He knows how we play. Cause in high school I would sneak in like alcohol in like soda cans or something and water bottles and stuff so he knew how we worked all right so stacy arrives at julie's sleepover they go up to julie's room and immediately like um stacy like webcams like liz and these queens are like having the time of their life at their sleepover party they made thongs with their names oh my god <laughs> Stacy sees a picture that's taped on uh, Julie's uh, desk. <sighs> these names, man, these names. <laughs> so Stacy sees a picture of Steve taped on Julie's desk. <laughs> and Julie's and Stacy's all like, <laughs> I'm getting so confused with these names. <laughs> so Stacy tells. <laughs> my life so stacy tells julie she is reaching way too high like if steve is ever going to be interested in her liz sends over the uh this this list the scavenger hunt list so this list consists of four things the first one is they have to dress up a mannequin um, in their own clothes. The second one is uh, they have to uh, have a guy buy them a drink at the casino club. The third one is to steal a patrol text uh, decal from their car, which is like that sticker that's like on the side of their car. And then the fourth is to steal a pair of Steve's boxers. And whoever completes the scavenger hunt, they get to sit they get to sit at the fountain. Like shit, that's a dream come true. Like fuck. So of course, Julie. If I, um, once Julie reads that entire note, she immediately doesn't want to do it because it consists of getting Steve's underwear. Hannah pulls her to the side and just starts talking to her and, and just comforting her again for like the thirtieth time. 
Like how many times do you need to tell this girl, like, girl, get your life together, quit bitching. I'm such a good friend. <laughs> According to Hannah, this is just, this scavenger hunt's not just about um, the lunch spot or who gets to sit at the lunch spot, but who are you going to be in high school? I'll tell you what she's gonna be in high school. She's gonna be a freshman. So of course, with that fun little pep talk, um, is enough for Julie to like agree to do this um, this uh, scavenger hunt. Julie comes back into the room, and um, uh, Stacy is um, setting up a profile for Julie on datesafe.com. Like, I am not kidding you guys. When <laughs> this whole site is like a um, <laughs> the whole site is just really hilarious like i'm not kidding you the site literally says the safe fun way to meet people and there's like this stamp of approval like this ribbon that says it's police approved is that the movie's way of telling you like Oh, they'll be fine. It, this is like, it's okay for them to just venture out and do all this adult stuff that no 14 to 15 year old should be doing, but it's okay. You know what? This is a site that's police approved. So Stacy sets up a profile for Julie. So they get an instant like, of course, and, um, and it's from a guy. So the guy says that he's gonna be wearing like a tie, like a, like a weird tie or like a polka dot tie or something like that. He's gonna be wearing like a um, a brown jacket and a, and a red tie. And uh, so Stacy replies that she's gonna be wearing like a, um, some kind of scarf or just like a scarf or whatever. So Stacy leaves cause she's gonna go to the scavenger hunt with her friends and um, the girls just start getting Julie ready for the night. This girl is just like, comes out in this like red cocktail dress with like, exposed girl, like. So her brother begins to start covering for her and tells her that he gives her like the A-OK -okay to get out. So of course they need a car. Um, and Yancey happens to tell him that she does have a car. And um, the car that Yancey has stored up for them is this cute little like green, like two seater electric car. Like I'm not joking you, it's so, it looks so adorable. Uh, the nerd squad, um, Evan Peter gets there. Um, I didn't even think of a name. I don't think I remember what his name was in the movie. We're gonna call him Headband because throughout the movie, he's just wearing a headband. Headband and his nerd squad get to um, to Julie's house and I guess they're ready to storm in and, you know, uh, they're, they're ready to crash uh, Julie's slumber party. Then uh, they find out that Julie is doing a scavenger hunt. They find her list of the scavenger hunt, so they, start following along to this scavenger hunt. So so of course the girls arrive to the mall to this old to the old navy store. And just as they arrive, Liz and the girl, Liz and Stacy and the girls are just walking out of the store and they had already completed their first task. Julie and the squad just um, go into this, uh, go into the Old Navy display room and they start dressing, undressing this like guy mannequin, this like male mannequin or whatever. Mind you, where are the employees in, in this whole store? They were non-existent. Like <laughs> this store was a hot mess. And Officer Lost happens to be there Okay, he happens to be there and he is like, the girls get all stunned and shook and he just turns around and the girls immediately like freeze. Okay, they like freeze. He's just like starts staring into like the, the mirror and he's like checking his teeth and fixing himself and all this stuff. Well, not like himself, but you know what I mean, like fixing his shirt and stuff. So, so he turns back around and the girls start moving around again and start like, dressing up all these mannequins and putting them together and stuff. And so Officer Lost is like hearing noises. So he turns back around and the girls freeze again, but in different poses. Um, and he's like confused, he's like, huh, huh? So he turns back around and the girls start doing the same thing again. And he turns back around and they freeze again in different poses. Like, does this man does not know the difference between what an actual mannequin looks like versus an actual human being? Sir, 
Wouldn't you start questioning things? Well, come on, oh my God, I'm just trying to put myself in his shoes. Wouldn't you start questioning things, sir, Officer Lost, if you turned around and see these like mannequins with these mannequins holding these mannequin parts, and then you turn back around and then you turn and look at those man quote unquote mannequins again, and they're in different poses. Why isn't this not ringing a bell? Like, why aren't you just like, wait, this man is like a mess, a mess. So finally, Officer Loss realizes that, oh, these are the girls, like what the hell? So he goes into their display room and he, they like, he's just like tripping and just falling everywhere and stuff. And um, the girls are able to lock him in there and get away. So, so the girls arrive at the club, immediately get a glance of Stacy and Liz and the friends um, just uh, going into the club. The bouncer just lets them in. Just, no questions asked. Just come on right in. Like, you don't look 14 or 15. Go right ahead. Well, Hannah says that we need to get in because we're with them. And they're like, with who? The girls that you just let in. Just the bouncer doesn't let them in. And everybody's just staring at them because I'm like, okay. The bouncer doesn't say like, oh, no. You guys are like underage. You look young or can I see some ID or blah, 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 nothing. He just says, no, you can't go inside at all. Everybody's just like kind of just moping around trying to figure out how the hell they're gonna get inside this club. Hannah starts seeing like there, there are these like, um, uh, what are those called? Those people that help set up like the, the concerts and stuff. Um, and she sees like these people like rolling in like these boxes that could like contain speakers and stuff. So she gets the idea of like, let's sneak in in through one of these boxes. So that's what they do. Finally, they're, they're all inside the club. They see Stacy um, taking a picture already with these guys that bought her, uh, that bought drinks or whatever, I don't know. Julie then spots the guy that she got set up on date safe and it happens to be her teacher. And of course she immediately starts freaking out. He recognizes her because of the scarf. Um, first and foremost, who the fuck wears a scarf at a club? Like that's the least play that you the least place that you want to go in with layers. She takes off her scarf and just tries to get rid of it or whatnot. He's like, oh June, it's me. Like, oh yeah, by the way, her name is June in the profile. So she puts on these glasses, these red glasses, these sunglasses, and um, he's just like, do you wanna do you wanna get a drink? And she's like, yeah. So he's like kind of just talking to her, you know, getting to know her, asking her questions um, and whatnot. And then that's when he realizes that June happens to be Julie the entire time. That's really shocking. Like, shook. I was shook for him. I was like, <gasps> He is all like, Julie, is this you? And she's like, yeah, it's me. She tells him basically like what they're doing. So he kind of just feels bad for them. So he ends up getting in like a sparkling water or something. And then he does the picture and they just complete. Then that's when they um, complete their, their, their next task is what I mean. It's like, um, have a guy, you know, from datesave.com. Buy them a drink. But just as the girls are about to leave um, the casino club, uh, Julie ends up spotting her mom at the casino club, just living it up, living her best life, like, get it, queen. Even the DJ is like hyping her up. She's like, okay, man, okay, queen, work. Julie's just like shook, cause she's like, how is she here? Like, she's old, she doesn't have fun. And um, like, girl, let her be, okay? She has to deal with your whiny ass and then with your hot mess of a brother. Like, your mom needs time away from all of y'all. So once, you know, her mom is done dancing, uh, she spots her scarf on the floor. So she kind of gets a quick glance of uh, Julie and Hannah leaving. So she walks outside and doesn't find Hannah and Julie. So she goes back inside and I guess she goes to the bathroom and is gonna use the phone that's in the bathroom. Was there phones ever in like club bathrooms? I don't think the, the many times that I was in clubs, I never saw a phone in there. 
But anyways, there's like this girl just like chatting it up like if she was like in her room, like gossiping with like her friend. And Julie is like freaking out because her mom's just about to call her at the house. So she needs to make a run for it. Yancy's car is like blocked off by two cars because she parallel parked. So there's like two cars blocking her way out. So Julie just grabs um, headbands. Uh, a skateboard because she's good at skateboarding. I mean, she just darts off, just starts making her way out because her mom's about to call and she cannot be caught. She happens to skateboard by none other than Peter. Peter, not Peter. <laughs> what's his name? Steven, Steven, what's his name? Steven? Steve, Steve, there you go. She happens to like skateboard by Steve and Steve sees her and he's just completely like mesmerized. He's just like, who is that? She's so cool. She skateboards in a dress too. Like who's this girl? I need to know who this girl is that skateboards in a dress. In awesome movie history, she's able to make it home in time and be able to, um, answer the phone for her mom so yeah on all, all, all honesty like julie is kind of really mean to her mom like girl your mom is like caring for you like i get it like you're growing up but like you don't have to be like a bitch to your mom like come on now queen and you're just over there just judging your mom for coming out and having fun what the fuck are you doing bitching that's all you're doing so she leaves the house again. Um, her friends, of course, pick her up. They're parked in front of uh, Steve's house. Um, Julie's like freaking out because she's like, we're parked in front of Steve's car, uh, house, sorry. And Yancey's like, uh-oh, we have an issue. Yancey's like telling her, well, the car just died. So Hannah just tells her like, it's fine. We'll deal with the car ourselves. Um, you go in there and go grab the uh, Steve's underwear. And Julie's like kind of freaking out. She's like, I don't really want to do this. Like, I'm scared, I'm nervous. Hannah's like, it's going to be fine, just go. So she starts trying to walk away and um, Hannah just starts giving her like the 60th pep talk of life. I swear, Julie is just so easy to get talk, talk, talked to, to, talk, talk, talk to. And I don't know how many times Hannah has like pep talked her and like made her come into her senses like many times and Julie gets in her senses real quick so <sighs> Julie goes inside Steve's house and she's like crawling through the floor and she sees his sees his shoe on the floor and she just picks it up I'm not kidding just picks it picks it up and smells it and smiles she's like that's nasty like okay don't get me wrong like okay i okay i'm about to call myself out i i smell weird shit too like i smell weird stuff a shoe a uh, girl that's just nasty like i highly doubt that his feet are clean or smell like flowers like those shoes must stink like ass so she hears um, Steve and his friend walking upstairs or walking to the room where she's at and she immediately is like scrambling to hide, ends up hiding in the bathroom um, that's like right next to the room that they're at um, in the shower. So and he's just still talking about her. He's just like mesmerized by her. She's like, she's just gorgeous. Like, oh, I just, I need to know who she is. Like, cause she's skateboarded in a dress. Meanwhile, outside, the girls are trying to um, find a plug to charge Yancey's car. Redhead ends up finding a plug that happened to be just, just on, a, uh, on, on a lamp post. How does that work? When the fuck has a, a plug ever been on a lamp post? I've never seen one. And if that's the case, why haven't I? Charging my car would be so much easier. Meanwhile, so Steve goes into the shower or goes into the bathroom that um, Julie's in and he turns on the shower, of course, so she gets her all wet and he starts 
I'm not joking. He starts undressing. And this girl is just like peeking through the curtains. She's just watching him undress. And I'm just like... Outside, the girls are pushing the car to be closer to the plug. And they just happen to just let it go. And it just happens to also crash like on the side of Officer Loss's car, his patrol tech car. Steve hears it and he just puts on a towel and just goes to see what happened, which is able to give uh, the right time for uh, uh, Julie to make her little fun getaway. Of course, she grabs um, his underwear and just takes off. <laughs> he happens to see Julie like climbing out of Steve's house um, and he of course catches her. She stops and she's like freaking out because she's like, oh my God, like I just got caught. Just as how he's about to take her in, um, he turns around to see his car and turns out that the green car is gone. We cut to a shot where the girls are able to park the car on another lamppost and they are able to plug it to charge it. This car is dead. How are they able to move this car with no power off of this patrol check's car that they just rammed into, um, move it and be able to steer it to another location without homeboy ever hearing anything like, what? Headband ends up going and I think messing up something and officer lost his car. So the girls pull up real quick to get Julie, Julie hops in the car and they just all dart off. Officer Laws tries to follow them, but I think his brakes wasn't working or something like that. So he ends up crashing into like some kind of like trash can and that's it. <laughs> I just have a problem right now. From the time that they moved that car to plug it in to the time of Julie getting caught by Officer Laws, how the hell did that car get a full charge? My car takes all night to get fully charged from home. Even if I charge it like in one of those like charging, the EV charging stations, it still takes a while to get a full charge. Like how the fuck does that work? Oh, and just FYI, I almost forgot this. Um, just as how Julie was like making her move um, to get back into the car and escape, she's able to grab um, Officer lost his uh, decal on the side of his car, so she completed her 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 goals or her tasks for the scavenger hunt. I guess whoever you know completes all their their what they what they need to do for uh first, um and get to the high school dance wins. All of them get there, um and it ends up being a tie. Liz proposes a. Uh, a tiebreaker whoever wins whoever can get the king or queen crown wins wins the lunch spot uh, the girls just go into this dance they come in they go in real big and bad and they get stopped by the ticket girl because i'm like thinking to myself i was like wait how the hell are they going into this dance don't they ask you for tickets or something like that or or if you don't go to this school don't you have somebody have to like sign you in Julie and everybody are in this dance, right? The girls are like, all right, let's do this. Let's get the, um, let's get the crown. Sorry, I had to really like quickly put on my eyeliner because I cannot talk and do my eyeliner at the same time. So, so the announcer of the party of the dance um, says that it's time for the dance contest. For some weird reason, there's a dance contest. Everybody just starts dancing. Hannah and the girls, uh, Stacy uh, starts dancing with a headband, headband, and Stacy end up winning the the dance contest, um, which is not a surprise because they were the only ones that were actually really like wilding out. Well, like while everybody was just like. So the girls obviously still come to their senses and they're just like, oh, we still have a yeah a, a challenge to finish. Which is, you know, get the um, get the uh, the the either the king or queen uh, crown. They see that Stacy and Liz are there already, and uh, they tell them that the 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 um, 
the uh, uh, the fuck, what is it? The crowns are not there. And then that's when the announcer tells them, hey, it's time to announce our king and queen for the night. It's like real quick too, cause these are just like, all right, time to announce our king and queen. And that is some girl and Steve. Was that his name Steve, Steven, Steven? Steve, there you go, Steve. That's pretty much it. They go off stage and they grab their crown and the guy, the director or whatever the announcer is just like, all right guys, go dance with whoever you pick. I thought that in this these things, the king and queen are supposed to have like a dance together. So obviously Steve um, on the microphone calls for Julie. Julie freezes and freaks out because like she doesn't know that he knows about her. And she's just like, oh my God. And everybody's like, go, go, like you'll be fine and whatnot. And um, so she walks on stage um, to see Steve um, and he's just like, I didn't, oh, I'm sorry, no. She's like, I didn't know you knew about me. And he's like, I do. And he, they start dancing in the middle of the dance floor and um, he takes off his crown and he puts it on her and he's like, you won. And literally the girls are pressed because Julie just won the scavenger hunt. So that means she wins the, a spot at the fountain while the other girls have to sit at the loser's table, which is by the dumpsters. This movie's a mess. I'm, I'm not joking for you. This movie's just a mess. So just as it's about the kiss, Julie's brother calls and he tells her to hurry back home because mom is on her way back. She immediately just starts off and I'm not even gonna drag this whole part because it's just really absurd. Um, the girls are able to sneak it back inside just as how Julie's mom arrives. They are able to go inside and um, pretend that they're asleep and yeah. Okay, so the next morning, um, everybody's of course, you know, having breakfast and all that stuff. Um, Julie and her mom kind of just have a moment where um, Julie's mom ends up realizing that, you know, Julie's growing up, she's not, you know, a teen anymore. Uh, or a preteen anymore, you know, she's being a, you know, a teenager now, she's growing up, I need to stop, you know, treating her as a baby. Just Hannah and Julie end up having a cute little moment where, you know, Julie's sad and crying because Hannah's leaving, um, you know, she's moving away and they're never gonna see each other um, as how they used to now. So the, uh, the movie ends with um, Steve being in Julie's tree house, have their little, little first kiss and um Stacy and Liz and the friends are eating at the lunch table and they're just mad and they're just like whatever and that's literally the end of the movie let me know what you guys think in the comments below what you guys think of today's video um if you watch sleepover let me know what you guys think <laughs> um do we agree is this movie such a hot mess of a movie like as well as, you know, um, leave me some suggestions of what you guys want to see in the next makeup and movies. I, of course, will watch it and make a video of it, of course. Um, before I let you guys go, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down here and go ahead and be part of the tribe, of course. And make sure you guys hit that like and share button so that we can bring in more people over here to the tribe so they can see my hot mess. Always look like a hot mess. Today would look like a little bit of a vampire hot mess, but it's okay. Thank you so much for watching you guys and I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.